Silicon Valley, there, there's a pretty simple algorithm that most people don't know. Um, and so I'm going to go over what that is with this uh, deck here. This is uh, one of our templates that we're going to be launching through Harbor Massive here real soon. And who, who plans the pitch? Who wants to know a lot about this? And I'll, I'll tailor the time to that. Like, do you want to know how to pitch? You guys have to say? You, you want to know how to pitch, I guess. Yeah? <laughs> um, all right, well, I'll make it pretty quick then. So I'll run through these and, and I can answer some questions. But uh, keep it simple, company name. All right, so on the first slide, just let people know who you are. Have a compelling picture in the back, right? Let the picture tell the story. You're going to try to keep everything really simple. People can't remember a lot, and, and investors are going to fly through this stuff. So, really got to keep it keep it simple. Uh, if your team is strong, you put the slide in the beginning. If not, you put it later. But uh, just your founders and management. And if your founders, uh, if you're looking for an A round, in most. Almost no investors will invest in a company with, with less than three founders. So, uh, if you're looking for you know four or five million or above, you've pretty much got to have four people that really cover the gambit of uh, what you the resources that you need. Um, the ones that you don't have, make sure you fill up with directors and advisors. Right. So bring some people on board that can fill in those other spots. Problem or unmet need. Um, this is one that we really, investors are really keen on right now because we've gone through this hype cycle of IoT where everybody put a Bluetooth chip on a product and called it a smart something and it was a really cool tech product and you know got a lot of buzz but it didn't solve any problem, right? So investors now really want to know what is the problem that you're solving, make sure that that problem really exists. So uh, describe the pain points, outline you know how that affects the customer in their daily life use uh, examples are really good you're, you're trying to tell a story you know more than anything right you want to tell a really compelling story about why you are the right product and how you're going to make the money straight to the target market all right how big is the target market target market serviceable addressable market you guys know tan and sam you guys familiar with these Kind of, sort of, maybe a little bit. Um, so this is the market that you can address with your product, right? So the total market may be big, but maybe there's some guy in Alaska who you're not really going to ever get to, right? So the, the, the important thing, you want to see, you know, explain what the total addressable market is, but when you're really answering the questions, it's about what is the serviceable market and how are you going to reach those people. Um, here is a great place to put in your specific knowledge, right? How is the market changing? Who are the new players? Uh, new regulations, new technology, you know, wow them with your understanding of what's really happening. Then you talk about the solution, right? And this is where you talk about your product. Uh, you're going to, uh, you need a unique value proposition, right? That's, that, that's the beginning point of your startup. We, you know, mentor a lot of startups, and at the ideation phase, you must have a unique value proposition. If you're not unique and valuable, you have no business, right? Uh, so change something, come up with a new idea, come up with a new target market, but uh, this is the driver of your solution. Um, then talk about the details very briefly and very simply. What do you sell? What is that value proposition? You don't need specifications. You don't need to know. They don't want to know, you know, the details of your product. They just want to know why is it the right solution to that particular problem. Um, so avoid all the diagrams, schematics, all that stuff. One, two pictures. Um, hopefully a prototype. You know, you always want to try to bring a prototype if you can uh, for a live meeting. Um, so then more about the competitive uh, landscape. And this is where also a lot of startups really don't do nearly enough research. We're so focused on the product, but make sure you've really done your homework on your competition, right? Um, oftentimes, these investors are seeing a thousand pitch decks a year. If they're in your category, they've probably seen 10 similar solutions to the problem that you're trying to solve. 
So if you are telling them that you're unique and you have no competitors, they know that's not true. Right? You always have competition. And we, we um, worked with an active evacuation system. Um, and it was not only a new product, it was a whole new category. Right? UL didn't have a category for this kind of certification. But they still have competitors, right? That the exit sign is a competitor because of the problem is getting out of the building safely and they're part of the solution and the current competition is, is exit signs and fire safety and those kinds of things. So um, if you're not sure, you know, just grab the closest competitors you can and talk about those. List your intellectual property, right? This is how you're going to help them de-risk their long-term investment. So again, real quick, one line for each patent. Uh, if you don't have a utility patent, then this slide is even more important. Right? So don't think that you're going to trick investors into investing in you. It's not going to happen. Right? They're going to do their due diligence. They've got plenty of resources to get answers much faster than you do about a lot of this stuff. And so if you don't have the right IP, you need to talk about how you're going to solve that problem. Right? You've got the first mover advantage. You can partner with bigger players who can help protect your brand. You can try to make all the money quickly. Um, you can be ready with a second product, right? So if you come out, you sell for six months, your product's ramping up. When everybody's copying your product and getting their tools finished, great, version two is coming out. Now their, their product hits the market and they're already uh, you know, secondary to your new product. Unfair advantage, why you, why now, right? Why is the timing right? And why is your product or solution or team or partnership or financing or your father-in-law's relationships or what, whatever it is that you know makes you uniquely advantageous, talk about this, right? special alliances, any, anything in your technology. But technical know-how here can be a really good one, right? You may not be able to get a patent for it, but if you're the only one that knows how to make that fixture for that machine, and that you know may take six months for people to figure that out, that's a really good one to put up here. Uh, business model. So how do you make money, right? This is this is the high level of, of how you make money. This is the revenue model, the pricing, the channels, the margins. Um, key things are average kind of life size, lifetime value of the customer, uh, your sales and distribution model your customer pipeline list. And again, you're gonna to try to keep this pretty simple. Graphs are a good way to do that, if you can fit it in all in a pretty simple visual. Uh, that's a good way to go. Um, the first customers are the hardest, right? Um, the, those first reviews on Amazon, those first case studies, those first champions of your product, so how are you going to reach those first customers, you know, the first 10, the first 100, the first 1,000? What is that strategy? Who are the partners that are going to get you there? What are those channels? And, and how are you really going to establish your position and brand in the market to grow that? Now you're going to get more into the details, right? Your profit and loss statement, your balance sheet, your cash flow, how much money are you asking for? So yeah, you have a slide about your financials. Again. You don't want a thousand numbers up here. They're not going to read it. Keep it simple with graphs and, and things that are really easy to see in a couple seconds. Uh, then your status and timeline. So where are you at? What is the traction that you've gotten? What, what kind of media you know, have you been on the front of a magazine? Uh, what are your accomplishments to date? And, and then where are you going? Right? Where is the next, what does the next 18 months look like? You know, you don't need to go way in the future, right? You're you basically you want to go to the next uh, funding round. So you're asking for this much money. You're going to get up to this next level to a new valuation. And how are you going to do that? You know, 18 months it can be a roughly good timeline for that. Um, what are your KPIs? Right? This is a really important one because this is how you're really going to drive your business and how they're going to measure you in the future. The, the next round of investors is going to measure how did you perform against your KPIs. And so when you're 
organizing your business and managing it to get that next round, you're going to drive everything towards these key performance indicators. So what are they? What are you trying to accomplish? And then how are you gonna, that drives how are you gonna use the money, right? And, and that is all part of that development roadmap. So this is where you show um, where you're at and where you're going. So that's it. Really simple, right? I think it's, it's 12 slides here. The typical Silicon Valley deck is 10 slides. We've added a couple more because hardware is hard and a little bit more complicated. Uh, but you're, you're gonna need to do this in 10 minutes, right? About the time that I've gone over it right now. So really fast, really to the point. You're trying to tell a compelling story at a high level. You know, you're not getting down into the weeds. Um, so less is more, right? People are gonna remember a simple story better than a complex story. Uh, one to two pictures max, 24 point font or above. You know, you don't, as soon as they have to lean forward and squint, you've lost them, right? Easily read graphs, focus on the main points. Um, what do investors want? Return. Return, they want money, right? So what do they want to know? What are you trying to convince them of? How fast they can get down like that? How can you make money? You know, the timeline is strangely almost already set. You know, I mean, it's, it varies a little bit, but there's a certain window that is the expectation of the market. So they're not even really so much asking that, but it's really simple. They want to know how much money are they going to make, how are they going to make that money, and how are you going to de-risk that investment? Right? So all of these slides are really trying to get to answer these three questions. And if you can do that, you're going to be successful. Right? If, if they really believe this, these three things, you've done your job and, and they're going to invest. To answer those questions, primarily they invest in three things, which is team, technology, and timing. Right? The team has to be right. Um, most startup teams are, are lacking something, right? So it's, you'll, you'll find the more experienced startups, they have really solid teams. And ironically, you know, those are the guys with a ton of experience that could do it themselves a lot more effectively, but they know how important it is to investors and, and to really be successful to have a strong team. So they add those other players. Technology, obviously, you have to solve that problem. And then the timing has to be right. You have to be hitting that upstroke of the market cycle. So if you're too early, you're too late, uh, it's gonna be, gonna be hard. <coughs> the pitch deck is only the first step, right? So you're gonna email this pitch deck to an investor. They're gonna flip through it in 30 seconds to a minute. And they're going to be looking for a few key things, right? Is it easy to read? You know, they need to be able to pull out all the key points without having to stop and squint and read. So it's got to be bam, 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 bam. All of these things, very simple, very clear. So you don't need all the details, right? Those can come later. And those will be, and then they might not even ever get to those details, but they're going to trust things like Amazon reviews, your working prototype, you know, these other things that will give them higher level indicators of the details that are behind all of your product. Um, so you want to impress with thoroughness. But you don't want to give all the details. How do you do that? So one example is, you know, you've got your three-year financial plan, right? And, um, you know, it's going to look, right? It always, it always looks like that, right? <laughs> and it's always a hockey stick in some form, right? Because why would you ever invest in something that's not going to scale, right? It's got to look like that. But the difference is, you know, if you've done all your homework, it's gonna you know, have some R&D, you're gonna onboard somebody, you're gonna rise up a little bit, you're gonna have tooling, bam, you're gonna have inventory, bam. And so it's these subtle details of un really understanding the cash flow, right? Not just plugging it into some cookie cutter equation that pops out a really obvious curve, right? And it's going to be the thorough, the, the clarity and compellingness of your unique value proposition, right? Is it easy to remember? Is it easy to understand? 
Have you really got that messaging down? Right. Um, it's the beauty of your prototype, you know, and, and it's all of these little details that take a tremendous amount of time, right? But they come out in a quick glance, and, and that's what you've got to do. So it's it's got to be detailed in everything that's behind it, and it takes a lot of work. Right? As simple as the outcome is, you know, it takes three six months of really uh, serious research to put all this together. But when you do that well, and you do it, then it, uh, then it'll come out in a very clear picture. So, and the goal is really, when you send the deck, the goal is to get the meeting, right? When you have the meeting, the goal is to get the next meeting. And, and so, that's where you don't need to have everything in here, and you can't. Um, so, what this is, what I've put together here is really the deck that you would email. Once you get into the meeting, you're gonna have these 12 slides and you'll probably update them with more relevant information. But then you, you could have 35 more slides in your appendix. Right? And what you wanna do is you want to um, try to think of all the questions that they're going to ask you. Right? Predict things. And, and what I've actually done is I've left things blank, or not blank, but unclear on purpose in the first 12 slides because they were there's too much detail to put in there. And I wanted to bait them into asking me that question. All right, so now, investors, they're, they're super smart. They think they're smarter than they are. All right, so, and they're trying to rip apart your plan. Because as soon as they can rip it apart, they can move on. All right, they just save their time. So if, if they know you're not a good investment, that's what they're trying to do, right? And so, it's very harsh. Um, but, but if they ask that question, hey, what about the medical industry, right? Okay, bam, slide 32, here's the total addressable market, here's where we fit in, this is the future, this is what we're thinking about, this is how we see this playing out, but that's not our first target, right? You're gonna stick with your first target, how are you gonna make money? Very, very focused. Um, so try to have all of those answers and, and try to really do that homework as well and have that in there. All right, I guess that's all you need to know. <laughs> Any questions?